Welcome to Ubisoft Montreal. So what's it like for you to step into a video game? You need some backstory. <laughs> uh, I'm an avid gamer. Anybody who knows me knows this already. Uh, I feel like I've been trying to speak this into ex existence for seven years and it's finally happening. <laughs> I'm like vibrating with excitement. <laughs> it's just, it, it's, even putting on this motion capture suit today, it's, I'm 100% living my dream. It's the coolest thing ever. It also helps that it's an incredible game and the character's cool. I mean, these, it, that's icing on the cake to the fact that I just get to be in a game, let alone Far Cry 4. What was it like you got to see your character for the first time here today? <laughs> so we were in there. <laughs> It wasn't even like the full rendering of Amita, and I was moving her hands, and I was like, what's this thing underneath her shirt? It's a necklace she's wearing. I own something! I mean, I was flipping out. I've already, I, I'm, it'll be very easy to cosplay as her, because I have some of the outfit already. Just gotta go into my closet. <laughs> Talk a little about the character that you do bring to life in Far Cry 4. So I'm playing Amita. And as you play, you will be able to choose which path you would like to take. Um, there are two sides to, well, there, there are more than two sides. But the only ones that I will talk about today are the two sides, the, the, my side and the one that's against me. Um, you can choose whether you want to side with Amita or Sabal. And in my opinion, Amita's side is the side, you definitely want to go with her. You can choose whatever way you want to play, it's up to you. But um, she is one of the leaders in the Golden Path and um, it is incredibly hard to be the only female leader that the Golden Path has ever seen. Um, she is really fighting for her people and, and most everybody is talking behind her back about how she's ruining their heritage. And it's just, it's a, it is a uh, hard plight that she is um, fighting. Yeah. When it comes to performance capture, how does it compare to when you're acting on a television or, or movie, especially considering you can have multiple people now with performance capture, you have stages, you have multi-levels? Mm -hmm. um, I feel like this is the perfect blend of the experience that I love in theater and the experience that I love in film. Um, there's also something that feels like when I fell in love with acting, doing my high school musical because we're really we're just using rafters that are being put together by the carpenters. Zzz, zzz, zzz. Okay, get on it. Now it's a building. Use your imagination. <laughs> so there's something uh, really theatrical in that. And then I also know that I can have really intimate moments where I'm not uh, full bodied and I can talk to the gamer and get in their face and uh, have a, a very vulnerable and um, minute performance almost and I know that the technology has advanced so much that it can catch all of that. It's fascinating. It's, I feel as though I'm very lucky to have entered the, this world the year that I have because it's, the technology has advanced so much that I can really do small things and big things and not have it be a mess. It catches everything perfectly. It's pretty, pretty great. <laughs> As a gamer, is there anything that has stood out in how you've learned how they make games from this experience? Yes, there are all these little things. Um, here at Ubisoft, they <laughs> might be telling you too much, but um, so when we when uh, a cinematic happens and then it fades to black and then gameplay starts again, here they call it a metier, which is named after some guy that fucking hates the fade to blacks. 
<laughs> so they've named this thing after him, and that's just hilarious to me. Like, now we're like, oh, okay, so we're gonna do a Metier? Great, okay. So <laughs> this poor guy has this shitty thing that he hates named after him. I love it. Um, and then uh, even just the detail of um, walking through a door. When you're playing a game, if you've ever noticed, if you've ever noticed, you push doors open. You will never open a door. So the so on our stage, um, in the volume, that's what we, what we call a stage, basically, um, the gamer will always push, but in the cinematic, the you, the performer acting with the gamer, is opening a door towards, it's just these really funny little things where you're like, oh, it has to be this way because of the gameplay, because of the, the, uh, the, the logistics of the game. <laughs>